It's Professor Mark Fontignon. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you at Vilux for organizing this uh, symposium for the last uh, 12 years, right, as uh, Pernal mentioned. And uh, I think one of the major success of this uh, symposium is to gather family. So I think that like, we are now family working together. And what happened in the last, uh, actually, uh, years since uh, Budapest, right, is that uh, the, maybe we have, we are a bit more mature regarding the lighting. I want to introduce the discussion about the value proposition of daylighting. And what happened in the last uh, few years where we certainly uh, concerned by the growth, the growth of cities and uh, the fact that the way of living is changing very rapidly and you know now we are all hooked to this kind of little equipment and every time we have a problem we look for an app to solve the problem. So that's the way we are now. We dream, and our dreams have changed. We dream for uh, maybe space, nature, light, vacation, I don't know. Uh, but dreams are the drivers of the way we consume and we build. Uh, the, we also have a desire for free, uh, for being free, uh, to choose our space to dimensions equipment in our place we live in, and also more and more for flexibility because we're concerned that life is changing rapidly. Uh, the, we know we're all concerned in this room about all the benefits associated to daylight. There's a huge list, and uh, uh, one being the enjoying the space, and uh, we are all convinced in this room that uh, without daylight we'll be, be, be much more tired now in this space after lunch, no problem. Uh, of course, uh, we talked 10 years ago much more about energy. There's some bad news for daylighting, partly, which is the fact that electric lighting is getting much more efficient, much cheaper, to a point where people don't care. Uh, it's no more on the agenda. So that's a big challenge. I'm not saying that we should uh, make buildings without windows, but you know, with LEDs, mixing of LEDs, you can simulate daylight, you can vary, you can do anything you want. Very, very attractive, and this may actually push the focus on lighting in this direction, which is not fortunate for us. I asked a, a French company, to, uh, Angelux, to tell me about latest work they've been doing and uh, are they domains where daylighting is done at very high price. And they say, well, we've been working on this uh, project here with Luminous Effects at the Van Gogh Foundation in Alphonse, France, and they got a, a project award for that. And uh, they also mentioned this project they've been working on with Jean Nouvel in uh, Australia. And it looks like with expressing uh, daylight in architecture, it's pretty good to get awards, architectural awards. So that's uh, a potential direct benefits in architecture. Uh, now, let's look outside the building industry. Let's go to cars. This is uh, something you may have on your car. Uh, it depends on which country you are in, but in some countries, it's very hip to have a glazed roof. I took the example here of a, a car by Volkswagen where the uh, glazed roof is sold 1,200 euros. So it's a bit less than having uh, leather seats, a bit more than having uh, some features on the computer. The, what I want to mention is there's a value proposition attached to a delighting component in the car industry. In the architecture, this is a manufacturer of houses in Denmark. And they propose options of daylighting, rooftops, at special prices, right? So I'm not talking about the cost, I'm talking about the value on the market. And for the customer here, you may have the choice between uh, putting a daylighting on the roof or having a super large fridge or a marble uh, kitchen or whatever. As consumer, we are free to choose different, uh, among different options, and lighting and daylighting are among options. And what I want to raise today is the perception of the value of daylighting. It needs to be assessed on the market uh, from consumer side. Uh, this is done typically by the industry and companies. Uh, it's called a uh, value proposition uh, approach, where you try to find the fit between uh, product and cust customers. Customers, uh, you try to analyze the desires, the needs, the fears, what's behind the choice of purchasing a product, 
And on the uh, supply side, what is exactly the service we provide? If I come back to the glazed roof in the car, the ventilation, the view, uh, the, the, the fact you're less tired maybe when you drive or whatever, you can enjoy spring uh, sun. And it's very important for all this product to uh, gather all this information. The problem I want to bring in the lighting is that how do we do that? And what, is, what we try to see is what is the value, the market value of daylighting as, as maybe a way to improve space. How much are we going to pay for daylighting? And to, to find out this information, we need to gather some uh, market figures to observe trends. How do people, what type of window do they want in Denmark, in France, in Italy, in the United States? and also explore preferences. Can we do benchmarking between daylighting and other features? Do you prefer an old style uh, roof, uh, a wooden uh, building with less or more daylight? There's always costs and in architecture you have to make choices, right? So the principle is to measure this, which is a, a challenge. So I just give you some review of some uh, papers uh, which are reviewed, and uh, you see that all over the place, what are the criteria of choices by uh, uh, customers for houses? This is a survey done in, in France, 2014, and among the criteria, view was in criteria number four, and uh, criteria number six was daylight and sunlight. But it's part of the different criteria, right? Another survey here with interview leading to possible uh, impact on uh, prices. And uh, you see that we talked about the darkness of the apartment. We talked about 5% impact on the price. The view, maybe 10%. And balcony in this survey, about 0.5%, right? Uh, more interesting in Belgium, a large survey, about 20,000 uh, houses, where among them, they found out that four orientations lead to value gain of 8.5%. And the most interesting thing, and I want the explanation from our Belgium friends in the room, is that the wine cellar increased the value of a house by 8.5%, where actually it's very cheap to build a wine cellar. So uh, I will very much appreciate comments by our Belgium colleagues in this room. Uh, I did myself some studies with some students in France uh, in 2002 where we interviewed uh, s people selling apartments and ho houses mostly, and they say, well, well daily apartments are the first one to be sold. Uh, the prices tend to be higher for the given address. And in refurbishment, putting one euro extra in a nice window can lead to increasing the profit margin, or the value, sorry, by three euro. So we have a, a financial model which could be extremely interesting uh, for delighting here. So the, what we try to do at SBI is to build the uh, value structure. And the value structure is very much related to context. The way we value uh, attributes depends very much on where we live in. If I live in a very dark apartment, I will value maybe light much more. If I have no view, I will value view. If I have no sun, I will value sun. Which means any uh, marketing analysis depends very much on the context and also the culture. But with the way we do that, we work in pair comparison. Uh, this is an example of a study I was doing in France in the 2005 with a number of 30 types of lighting in office space where we interviewed uh, various uh, occupants and we rated the quality on the x-axis and vertically was the energy use to, to identify possible win-win solutions. But that was using a parameter for quality which could be discussed. We have something much more powerful in, in these kind of studies, and the Germans have a good example here, which is the Bundesliga. How do we find in Germany which football team is the best? You say, let's have all teams play together. They get three points when they win, one point when there's a draw, zero when they, they lose, right? And after two, three, four, five months, we, need, we see who's the best. That's very solid. You can't discuss that, sorry, but that's today. Bayern München is definitely the best. I think he was the best uh, in April. Uh, I think still the best today in, uh, for the Bundesliga. So if we apply these techniques for uh, stimuli, we can provide 
uh, images, photorealistic images of lighting schemes to panels of observers. And we ask these observers to judge the uh, image two by two, by pairs. They win, they get points, they lose, they have zero points, right? And you present a large number of scenes. That's for electric lighting. You show to panels of observers a number of scenes, which is calibrated in luminance on the screen, is projected, and you do pair comparison every time they have to select what they want. You build a large database, and at the end, you present the results this way, and on the x-axis, you have the quality criteria, like the Bundesliga, the number of points you get. So the more you are to the right, the better you are. Vertically, we put a, here, this is the efficiency of lighting, so we can identify the best lighting configurations uh, regarding power, but we could put cost, we could be profit margin, we could put any objective criteria. So this is a technique we're using, we've been using a different uh, type of, uh, of uh, uh, cases, and this could be applied for sure for daylighting, for inviting people to select different window systems in given spaces. Uh, roof systems, uh, we could also have influence of balconies to see uh, which level the balconies above are acceptable for shading or non-acceptable. These many issues we can uh, address with this technique. What I want to say is this photorealistic image, this experience we had, is a powerful tool and it's used also by the car industry. The what we found out is that it's a bit like a wine tasting experience. If you're invited to do wine tasting, you don't want to be alone. You want to share. Because if someone say, Mike, we have three wines, please test them. So it's fine. They say, oh, if we're a group of six people and we're testing the wine, discussing, and we learn from each other. So what we learn from that is the testing of cases should be shared. So for this reason, we have developed something which will be demonstrated downstairs uh, later, using virtual reality, virtual reality and shared ways to be two, three, four hundred people together in spaces. And we change the window of the lighting system in real time. And everybody can react, select and vote for the one they prefer. Now, these techniques could be used based on websites and very practical. You don't have to invite people, but you share this, and this could be controlled by any company or architects, lighting designers, manufacturer, to solve some problems dealing with marketing. This is a process used by the car industry, and we propose to use it for daylighting here. So just to finish mainly this message, uh, what is proposed here is to organize shared exploration of lighting solutions in daylighting, electric lighting, or anything. It could be furniture, could be all equipment. Knowing that the groups of people you invite to judge are not neutral. Doing the test in Germany may be different, like doing the test in, the test in Italy. It would depend on the type of market segment, right? But this could be uh, useful, but this allows to rank solutions, right? Now, on top of that, we need some market data, which are costs. We need uh, to know how much people are ready to pay for that. Uh, we can provide a graph or explore using subjective and objective ranking. And that's the kind of thing you can do for any type of daylighting systems or solution or global apartment. This is, for example, 10 ways or 20 ways to provide daylighting in a room which is 30 square meter and different proposals by architects and you use this system to rank them among a panel of observers could be uh, 30 people 50 people for example and vertically on the x-axis you can plot whatever you want you can plot the cost of making them the difficulty uh, the margin profit margin whatever objective data you have and you get a number of points and then you can identify, here I put in a red circle, for example, uh, solutions which are preferred by observers, but also are cheaper and can go into budget. Because we've seen in, uh, I mean, we, all the architects in this room are convinced there are actually incredible possibilities of daylighting in architecture. 
but in the market we may not always be able to pay for that. So the idea, the proposal here is to uh, try to identify what the market prefers and what is what fits with a typical budget in houses, workplaces, or whatever. This could cover the lighting, electric lighting, or any other attribute in architecture. So this is uh, the message I wanted to deliver. I'd be very happy to welcome you downstairs to experience the multiple uh, virtual reality experience with portable systems. Thank you very much.